Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to show you how I use my Husqvarna Viking Designer Epic 1 embroidery machine to make an 18th century pocket. I am using an embroidery pattern that was digitized by So Steen, and I will have her linked down below. And I don't intend this to be a tutorial as much as a this is how I did it. Um, there are probably multiple ways to make 18th century pockets and this is just the method that I've become the most comfortable with. So um, the pocket I'm going to make is made out of 100% linen. It used to be a duvet cover from Ikea. It's the same linen I used on my 18th century petticoat back there. And I'm using cotton broadcloth as the lining and cotton twill tape for the waistband. In addition, this is my first entry into the release of videos over the CoCoVid weekend. If you're not sure what CoCoVid is, I will put a link up above to my video that explains it. And I will also link a CoCoVid playlist down below that eventually will end up having all of the videos released this weekend um, on it. With that, let's get sewing. The first step in preparing to embroider the panels was to cut the linen the appropriate width. I did this by placing it underneath my embroidery hoop and cutting it with a generous margin on all sides. I do that so that not only do I have enough fabric to actually make the pocket with, but also none of the fabric will get caught or pulled out during the embroidery process. After the linen was cut, I also used my wash away stabilizer and I cut a length uh, the, a little bit longer than the length of my embroidery hoop so that I could hoop it with the linen as well. Now that the stabilizer and the fabric are both cut to size, the first step in hooping them is to place the outer embroidery ring under the stabilizer and center the stabilizer over the ring. Once I've done that, I center the fabric over the stabilizer and the ring. You'll notice here that my linen is pretty wrinkly and um, probably should have been pressed, but part of the hooping process is pulling the fabric tight, which also eliminates the majority of those wrinkles. Linen wrinkles so badly that I just didn't even want to try messing with pressing it before hooping it. So here you see I have the linen and the stabilizer in the hoop and I have the inner ring placed and tightened a little bit and so I'm using this tension to start pulling the wrinkles out of the linen fabric and to get it hooped tightly. And now I closed the snap on the outer ring, I'm trying to, and once I get that closed, I'll be able to really pull the fabric taut. And apparently here my camera decided to focus on my sleeve rather than the fabric. I have the embroidery arm attached to my machine and I have my thread picked out and now it's just time to get the embroidery pattern set up and ready to go. I just thought it would be good to show you my embroidery setup. This pattern used five colors of thread total and it took about two and a half hours to complete the embroidery. Right here I had the pattern set up and ready to go and I am attaching my hoop to the machine. And once I press start, the machine pretty much takes care of all of the three for me. 
uh, the two and a half hours just counts embroidery time and doesn't count the time it took for me to change the threads or being distracted in a different room or whatever. Here I am basting around the outside edge of my design which just secures the linen to the wash away stabilizer. And right here I paused my embroidery process because my machine wasn't far enough forward on my desk and it was causing the hoop to bump into the windowsill behind it. Once I got that all settled out I hit start again and off it went. I just use the same color thread to baste around the hoop as I do for the very beginning of the embroidery design. Here you can see we're partway through the embroidery design. The edge of the pocket is embroidered, some of the bright pink is embroidered, and we're on to doing some of the green. changing threads in my machine between colors is very simple. Once the embroidery was complete, I trimmed the jump stitch threads from the front and the back of the piece. Additionally, the stabilizer in the back was trimmed down as well.
Using the embroidered edge as a guide, I drew the pocket shape one and a half inches away from the embroidery and cut out the front piece. I used the front piece as a guide to cut out the back piece and the two lining pieces. Once the pieces were cut out, I flatlined both the front and the back to provide extra structure and to protect the wrong side of the embroidery. I also cut the pocket opening. I used linen, I call it bias tape, but it wasn't cut on the bias, um, linen tape to bind the pocket opening using a back stitch. And I did this by hand because I didn't think that I had the manual dexterity to stitch such a tight seam on my machine. It could be done my machine very easily if somebody wanted to, I just chose not to. Once the linen tape was attached to the front side of the pocket, I folded it over, securing the raw edges of the pocket opening, and I sewed it to the inside of the pocket using a small whip stitch.
To assemble the pocket, I placed the two pieces lining side together and pinned them relatively conservatively because I didn't want the pieces to shift at all. the pieces were pinned, I basted it around the outside edge using the seam width guide on my machine. Using the seam width guide just ensured that I was sewing an equal distance away from I used the same linen tape uh, to bind the outside edge of the pocket as I did the pocket opening. And I did sew this on with my machine. Once the binding was completely attached to the front of the pocket, I folded it over encasing the raw edge of the pocket and pinned it in place. This was a little bit fiddly around the corner since I just used strips of fabric instead of actual bias binding, but it worked out in the end.
Once the bias binding was pinned in place, I stitched in the ditch from the front of the pocket, which caught the binding on the back side of the pocket. Once the binding was attached, I felt like there was still too much extra at the top, so I stitched across the top one more time to remove some of that excess. Once this was finished, I used that as a guide for attaching the waist tape. Finally, I added the waist tie. I cut a piece of twill tape the length of my waist plus 20 inches. I centered the twill tape on the pocket and secured it to the front using pins. At this time, I also secured the twill tape ends by folding them in half and getting them ready to sew together. I secured the end of the twill tape by folding it inwards by about a quarter of an inch and then folding the twill tape in half. And I did repeated that same process on the other end as well. I used an edge stitch to secure the end of the twill tape and then to sew the twill tape to itself until I got to the edge of the pocket. Once I got to the edge of the pocket, I made sure to open up the tape so I was only securing the twill tape to the front of the pocket at this point. Then I repeated the process and secured the twill tape to itself the rest of the way to the other end and I also sewed the end. So this is what the edge stitch looks like on the front of the pocket, and this is the unfinished back side of the pocket. I secured the twill tape to the back of the pocket using a small whip stitch that is not visible on the front.
with that, our embroidered 18th century pocket is finished. I'm really happy with how this turned out. I ended up going through about four different color schemes um, and embroidered pockets before I found one I actually really loved. If you liked this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content like this, um, go ahead and subscribe. And if you want YouTube to let you know every time I upload, hit the little bell. Again, please make sure you check out the rest of the CocoVid videos. There are so many different creators who have put in a ton of time and work, and there's some excellent content coming out uh, through this weekend. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.